Okay, um, in this video we're going to talk about polymorphism, which is sort of the practical application of some of these inheritance ideas uh, we were discussing in the last videos. So polymorphism uh, is basically a word based on the original Greek, poly, many, morph, form, <clears throat> so it means many forms. And it basically means there's some programming language construct that can take on different meanings in different contexts. And there's different kinds of polymorphism. And you know, for example, a few of them, uh, generics, we have a single class, array list, that can work on integers or strings. And so it has different behavior um, depending on the context there, right? Uh, in one case, it holds integers. In the other case, it holds strings. We've also seen use of different operators. So for example, plus sign uh, normally you know, means add two numbers, ints or doubles but also means concatenate in the context of strings. So uh, again, it is one thing that has different behaviors in different, different contexts. Now, there's another kind of polymorphism called subtype polymorphism. And really, this is what, in object-oriented languages, this is sort of like the big one, the big deal with polymorphism. And it means that derived types um, can have different behaviors than the superclass for the same method name, which you've seen in uh, inheritance, uh, you override a method, um, but we can access that through a common superclass type. So let's talk about what that really, really means. Okay, so if I make a circle object, normally we would store it in a circle type variable, but a, we can store it also in a, uh, a variable of the type of any superclass of that thing. So all objects in Java inherit from uh, this object class. Um, and so if I make any kind of new object, I can assign it to something of that type. More, that would be rare. You know, it's like those objects don't really know how to do anything, so they're, they're not that great to hold things. But uh, for example, I could have shape, um, which is the superclass of square. Um, so I, I declare a variable type shape, and I assign to it an actual object of the subtype, a new square of uh, uh, side length five. Okay, so um, we're taking it from the specific and assigning it to the more general here. Now, let's say you call um, a method. So I want to call like the, the area of, uh, of an object. Um, at compile time, it checks the existence of the method in that variable type. So shape s, um, it looks to see if there is an area defined for shape. And in our example, we have shape here and uh, there's an area defined, right? It's not implemented, but it's, it exists. The name is there, so it knows it has to be there. Then at runtime, when it's actually being executed, um, it goes, so a shape reference here is gonna reference this circle object. This circle object knows about, again, the methods that belong to it and it's gonna find the area and use the area that belongs to circle at this time, all right? So this is a shape S, but it is assigned a circle. And so when you call S area, it, get, it uses the area of the actual object. I'll point out that at the runtime, there's also this uh, reference to the shape object, uh, the internal stuff that has, you know, if there's any instance variables that belong to it, they'd be in there. Um, but also it knows about the methods that belong to shape. So for example, it knows about the two string in uh, shape. And so if I were to try to print out S at compile time, I would check to see if two string belongs in the uh, shape class, and it does. At runtime, it would go and look in the circle and say, hey, is there a two string here that overrides that? And say no. So then, okay, let's go look up the inheritance chain and go to the class shape, and there is a two string there that we can use. <clears throat> All right, so again, there's, there's, there's two parts to it. One is the compile time. And in the class itself of the, the, the variable type, it has to have that, that same method. And then at runtime, 
Um, it checks and uses the one that belongs to the object, not of the variable type. OK, so why do we want to do this? Well, really, the main point is we want to have um, code that is fairly general purpose. So let's see. Here, uh, I'm going to make a public static method uh, void. Uh, well, I'm going to return. A, I don't know why it's void there. Uh, double um, add area. And it's going to take two shapes, shape S1 and shape S2. And it is just going to return the area for S1 plus the area for S2. Now again, this add area seems a little useless because shapes don't actually have an implementation. But I'm going to inherit this down in uh, circle, for example. And so, well, let's see. What should I do here? Hmm. Actually, I'm going to change this and only take in, mm, <laughs> I don't want to make that stack. I'm going to do this just a little differently. I, I sort of, maybe, OK. so. I'm going to have one call the other. So it's okay. <laughs> S1. Okay, so now let, let's let's test it and then talk about it. So down here, I'm going to have C1 add the area to R1. And I'm going to print it out. What have I just done? <laughs> I looked at the keyboard and everything went away. Okay. Uh, C1 add area to R1. So that's going to return the combined areas. And uh, you know, one can only guess. OK, 3 plus 2 is, is the 5. So how's this working? OK, so C1 uh, is, inherits from shape. So it also inherits the add area method here. And I want to be able to do more than you know just add a circle to a circle or a rectangle to a rectangle. So um, here. I am passing in the argument to add area is a rectangle object, right? The code for this takes it as a shape S1. So this is really, what's really going on here is shape S1 equals R1, which really is a new rectangle object of some kind, right? There's a rectangle object hiding in that in that reference. So I'm assigning a rectangle object to a shape variable. And that's the polymorphic aspect that I can store a reference to a subclass in the superclass variable. And then when S1 asks for its area, um, it is saying, OK, uh, at compile time, does shape have an area? Yes, it does. At runtime, what is S1 referencing? It's referencing a rectangle. And it's going to ask the area of the rectangle and get the correct computation based on that. OK, so again, what, what does this let me do? It lets me have things that are related to each other work together in a nice way. right? I don't have to write a separate method add area for coming from a circle, going to a rectangle, coming from a circle, going to a circle, coming from a circle, going to a square coming from a circle, going to a triangle. And then also the other way around, from a rectangle to a circle, from a rectangle to a rectangle. You know, that would take forever. And every time you added one more object, it would be just like you'd have to write, go to all those classes and add you know, the directions for both ways. And it would, it would be a huge amount of code. And it would all look the same, right? Because all those just say, give me the area of the first one, give me the area of the second one. So here, we're just saying um, we write one method that says a little, thinks a little more abstractly. If their behavior is the same in all cases, do it at the shape level. 
Another thing we can do is make collections of these things, um, shapes, a new array list, and I need to import that. And okay, so what can this hold? This hold a bunch of different shapes, but can also hold specific objects instead, right? So shapes um, add C1 and shapes dot add R1. So now we have one list holding kind of a mixed bag of stuff. It's not completely general. It's not like an int and a string and a circle and a and an animal or something like that. These are all related under this shape concept here. And now, of course, the nice thing I can do is for shape s coming from shapes. Let's do the singular here, not just s. Shape coming from shapes. I can print out shape, print out the shape. OK, so I run this. Printed out the circle and printed out the rectangle. That's because, again, the object, the circle object, is assigned to a shape reference inside the array list. And the rectangle reference is assigned to a shape variable in the array list. But when I actually call them, it calls the two string and uses the area and uh, perimeter appropriate for a circle in the first case and a rectangle in the second case. So again, this just again, instead of having to have one array list for circles and a one array, array list for rectangles, loop over each one, probably do the same behavior for each one. Here we can loop over a collection of all those different kinds and um, do something to each one and it does the correct thing. You can really imagine this being useful, for example, in a game where you might have a, an array list of enemies. And those enemies may be, you know, archers and thieves and you know whatever monsters, um, and they each do their own. You know, you say attack or something like that, and they each do their own special specialized attack. So there is a lot to handle here, and again, this is more has to do with like the architecture of things, how things relate, which is actually a little bit harder, I think, than just thinking about like a for loop or that kind of thing. And it's going to take quite a bit of practice for you to get used to these concepts and be able to use them um, effectively. But we're going to start using them in the context of, again, of a graphical user interface where things like buttons inherit from a more general button uh, and then like you know, the different kinds of buttons that we use. And well, you'll see how these all fit together kind of nicely um, using these concepts. Okay.